It's nice. It's nice to see your house. Hey, Ryan. How you doing, Ryan? Ryan. You're muted, Ryan. Ryan. Nick Maitsky? <laughs> hey, Nick Maitsky. Nick Maitsky. I should be talking to you guys in Indian. It's just keen. Then I'm Timke. Um. <laughs> uh, I'm still very shallow, so I'd lose it very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a, uh, you know, it, like I said, uh, you know, there's a, I, I know a friend down in, uh, along the Columbia River, and his father, I think it was his grandfather that used to talk fluent Yakima, and he was a, he was a white farmer. And there were there were a lot of those that did a lot of business with uh, the Indians, and they just picked it up, you know, how to how to talk to the people and as they were amongst them. And a lot of it was when they would get ta teased a lot too. <laughs> you know, they'd get teased a lot. Um, but. Uh, there was, uh, it was, like I said, I, when I was a kid, there was a store in Topnish. Uh, they called it Abe Lincoln's. It was like a trading store. Uh, what was it? A, like a pawn shop. And to walk in there and hear a white man talking Indian to my grandmother. Hey, Mr. Mo, Mr. You know, hey, what are you doing? Mini Kninam Paishan. Where'd you arrive from? You know, they did, and of course, grandma would just start talking to him. You know, just, uh, the Shwaicha, Chiwana, across the big river. The Shwaicha and Chiwana. So, so it's, you know, it's a learnable language. Jonathan is learning. On my mm -hmm. best. So, hey. Chiwana means the big river? Yeah, in Chi, in Chi. Is uh, you want to go ahead and go to your? Do I need to give you that? Uh, or you got it? Okay. Jonathan's on it. Uh, in T is it's uh, it's that uh, ejective C. Ejective hat check. Okay. Yeah, it has a deeper deeper in T one. Because. Yeah. I'm not sure if you guys are aware, but of course, one of the high schools over here, actually the one that's two block or two miles away from here is Chiawana High School. I didn't realize what it actually meant. So it's that Big River High School, basically. Yeah. But it's spelled um, wrong, obviously. Well, it's it's it just ma mainly a pronunciation in mm -hmm. meaning a big in Wana in Chiwana. In Kiwana. Yeah. yeah, in Chiwana. Okay. Walla. Walla is uh, a creek. Walla. So, so when they say Walla Walla, then is it? Small creek. Okay. Yeah. So then there's there's our relatives and people over in uh, Priest Rapids. They call themselves Wanapum. Mm -hmm. Wanapum. That's where I made a mistake talking Indian over there. Saying, what is that? Uh, what is that? oh. I didn't want to talk because there was a lot of elders there. It was during one of their feasts, and I, I did talk. The elders were encouraging me to talk. And I was, you know, and I, I'm, I'm, I always consider myself a language student of wanting to use maybe different words that I learn as I go, and especially in front of them elders. Why well, it was uh, just one of those times where I fumbled. And I first words that came out was uh, Nishkotlasha. Just napoin ayet 
Dean Yanui. And I thought, oh my God, I, I did not mean to say it that, that way. And here what I said was, I'm very happy to be here with both of my wives. <laughs> Thinking I would get away with it, but I just keep talking and rolling on and rolling on, you know, and cover it up uh, at the end of the at the end of my speech when I, you know, everybody raised their hand to say I, they're the leader. Did I hear you right? Said you said that you're happy to be here with both your wives. <laughs> but yeah. Um, so I don't know what their efforts are there at one of them in their language, but a lot of our language. Um, um, how would you say? Pa isikwan ka kat nampa. Pa isikwan ka kat nampa. Nami sinwit. So what this is saying is that uh, the languages are are taught at the longhouses. In you know, and it, and it's not about how it's written, but it's mainly about hearing it. And a lot of it, a lot of our songs um, have the language in it, so they just learn it as they go. You know, every Sunday, you know, patriwiti uh, tapa. Um, can I ask? Um, can I look at like one of them? So what does the palm mean? So if I know that Wana is river, what does palm mean? Because I'm assuming it all connects, right? People. So people of the river. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Like uh, the people of Walla Walla would be known as Walula Pum. Okay. Uh -huh. Walula Pum. So how does it switch from Walla to Walula? Does that make sense? Um, Walula, um, you've probably been over there, passed through there. Right, yeah, the Walula right. Gap, right? Yeah, Walula is, uh, um, is, you know, like a place in itself. Um, well, it, it, again, it's, it's the, it's the original name of our people. Right. Of the Walla Walla. Yeah. Walula. Walula Pum. So, but I mean, is there a nature, is it like a difference in words? So like Walla is, is creek. So Walla Walla is small creek. Walla Walula is not its own word then. It doesn't mean like a differential of creek. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah, it's, it's the, how we, uh, Acknowledge uh, the people. Oh, um, okay. That, that the people that we are part of our families and people were Walula, Walula so, Pums. So it's almost like a proper name then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, gotcha. Walula mm -hmm. Pum. Yeah. My aunt, uh, when she would talk, uh, Inez, mm -hmm. I know. She would always, instead of saying pum or uh, or poo, she would say, like, sometimes she would refer to, like, walla walla slam and walla walla slam. And, and that was her way of uh, implying, um, you know, people of walla walla. Yeah. So it's it it's actually the the original inhabitants of you know the, those that were you know of the region like like uh, you know I think the debate has always been whether if, uh, um, like Cayuse whether if that was an actual Indian word or whether or because supposedly the the Cayuse were Waiilat Pu Waiilat Pu. And that had an implication of uh, where the um, where the grass would really wave, mm. um, you know, where they where the what Cayuse Indians lived. 
Uh, Umatilla, Umatilla was originally Umma, Umatalam, Umatalam Slam, Umatalam Slam. So what does Umatalam mean? So Umatalam is? The um, it has to do with our mouth. Umma. So the as in like the way you talk or just the way that your mouth is? Um, because of the, that when you go across the, you must, from the Oregon side, when you're going over to Washington and crossing that bridge, um, there's a, there's a big high hill there. Mm-hmm. And I'm not mm-hmm. sure the name of that hill, but that used to be a, a, a big mountain. Um, and she was the one that would get to greet the sun every day. Hmm. And uh, the other sisters, Patu, Waiis, um, I can't remember the other sisters, but other snow-capped mountains got jealous of her, and they killed her. They, they, they like, uh, like, like cut her head off. And so parts of her are scattered uh, throughout. And apparently where we, our people are, is where the mouth, her mouth went. So we were referred to, you know, Umma, Umma Talam, Umma, the people of the, of the mouth, I guess you could say. It's kind of an in-depth story. Um, oh, I'd have to go see my yaya, my, my yaya, and ask him, you know, this is exactly how that story is. He started, he told it to, you know, but it's not as if we recorded it, but, you know, it does require us to have to record it in our, minds because because when he talks it in Indian you know it uh, it gets real in depth yeah so, but yeah. but originally it was um umatalam okay. umatalam okay. so and, and then of course with the you know normally that yuma would be with a y or something right mm-hmm. yeah umatilla we're accustomed to Umatilla, so we've adapted. But it's only been through the years that I've, you know, myself learning that um, Umatilla, Umatilla Islam, and you know, Umatilla people, Wailat who um, did you write that one down, Jonathan? Not yet. I was going to ask you to repeat it. Wailat who? Why? Yeah. Why? Wailat who? Wailat who? So, and I was going to ask on that, and I, I'm sorry, I'm kind of just snagging all the time, but how did it go from Wailipu to Cayuse? Is Cayuse, is that how it means grass? You know, I don't know. <laughs> okay, I just thought I'd ask the question. Because, I mean, that kind of is what they call the area where all the grassland is, right? Isn't that kind of all the grassy hills that it's, that's what they call that area? Yeah, the- before it was all farmed and agricultured, mm-hmm. yeah, it was a vast grassland. Yep. Since it's really hard to imagine what it really looked like before, uh, you know, settlement. You know, yeah. we can only imagine what it must look like all all throughout the land and region before settlement and. You know, I gotta do her. I gotta do a tour tomorrow, and I've only gone to the area once, and that's through like Connell uh, area, mm-hmm. and and supposedly, you know, the, the the Horse Heaven Hills used to be just covered with littered with horses, you know, wild horses, like how the Yakima Reservation is now. The Yakima Reservation, you know, has you know, at least. 10,000 horses yet that run wow. free on the reservation. And it's been a problem. Um, but imagine, you know, what that must have looked like, you know, throughout the, you know, the region over there, if it was known as horse heaven, mm-hmm. uh, just, you know, horses everywhere, you know, and they just gathered them up and slaughtered them basically. And, um, but, uh, 
you know, it'll be interesting just to kind of see what uh, what I have to come up with for um, any knowledge at all, you know, for that. Um, because I know I've, I've, I've kind of come to the, to the realization that a lot of us, a lot of our people, they didn't just live out there, you know, out in the plains. They always resided by rivers and creeks, you know, where there was a water source, fishing source, um, you know, hunting source, you know, whatever, wherever the resources were for us, you know, access, you know, to, you know, and, you know, to, and to go where we needed to go. Right. So are you yeah. familiar with the area around where Lake Colotus was then? Uh, I don't even know where Lake Colotus is. Well, it doesn't exist anymore. That's why I was asking. I was just curious if you'd heard any stories about what Colotus was like when the lake was still there. No, no. Um, I don't even know if Colotus is an Indian word. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have no clue. I grew up in Connell. That's why I was asking. So oh, if you have okay. any questions about Connell, you can ask me questions about Connell after class. Sure. Okay, so again, go ahead. I had an old friend um, from Yakima, and he said his, his people came from down by the river, maybe by uh, white salmon. And he always said his people, and I never heard anyone ever say it, pronounce it this way. He said, Wishkum, Wishkum were his people. Does that sound right to you? Or did I get it yeah. wrong? Yeah, Wish, Wishkum. What does that mean? Uh, you know, that's, that's their, own, uh, their own language uh, because they, that, that's its own language and, and it's, it's actually just about a, an extinct language. Um, wish hum. So it was uh, like people, like non-treaty Indians. That's what the sociologists always say. Oh, the non-treaty Indians down by the river. Is that about right? Like white salmon and no, Indian. they're they're included. I think they're included in the as as part of the, the one of the fourteen bands. The oh, now, now, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was a tribal member. Yeah, yeah, but. Okay, wish come is it is it like a separate little group down there, right? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, so we, we were acquainted with. There's some that are descendants yet, uh, um, and one there was uh, like the Moses family, Clifford Moses, uh, senior, and his brother Nelson Moses. Uh, I'm not sure who the sisters were, but those particular, they spoke fluent wish come language. So and then yeah. Uh, on that, so the town of Wishram, Washington, so W-I-S-H-R-A-M, I'm assuming is that probably just a misspelling of Wishkum? Uh, you know, I don't even know what if that, if that. That's a town on the river, but... right over by like where Mary Hill Museum is. Yeah, yeah. I'm familiar with that sounds like the, 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 the neck of the woods checks out, so to speak. Yeah. Can you tell us yeah, anything wish. about what, what the difference was? I mean, they had their own language. I, maybe this is like really off into the weeds here, but because he was a good friend of mine, I was just kind of curious what that was about. Well, there's, it's, real, it's a real deep glutteral language. I know that. Uh, um, and it's kind of like almost like how Wenatchee Wenatchee language is. It's real glutteral, uh, you know. Wish wish come wish come, and I'm just trying to see what the Yakima dictionary. If you ever get a chance to buy the Yakima dictionary, it's a good one to have too for reference. Um, you know, but there are people that still live down there, but they're, you know, they're either enrolled with Yakima or, or Warm Springs. Uh, and I'm not sure if there's any Wattellas down there. I'm sure there is. We're everywhere. <laughs> uh, I'm not actually seeing anything in the... the Mm. 
they were um, in here in Yakima. It, you know, it, it has a reference of the. Uh, actually, it doesn't look like it's pronounced wishcham, but it looks like it's with that bardai sound with the washcham, washcham, uh, wishram. So it it is uh, the same, but it's washcham. Mm. The Wasco and Wishram Indians are the Chinookan peoples who have spoken Upper Chinook dialects and have lived just east of the Cascade Mountains in Oregon and Washington. They wintered close to the Columbia River. Um, so that's uh, that's what ref, uh, the reference here in uh, the Yakima. It is Keen Sinuit, the Sahaptan Dictionary. Yeah, like I was saying, if you get a chance, you get this, uh, oh, what, Washington Press? Okay. Amazon, whatever. Yeah. So good reference. Dr. Uh, with uh, Virginia Beaver, Sharon Hargis, and uh, with essays by Bruce Rigsby. Yeah. Commission. Yeah, there's been, uh, you know, there's been uh, a lot of, um, I think, names, um, Indian names, you know, do we've had to try to decipher that uh, that go back in our genealogies that are, mis you know, misspelled, of course, because our people didn't write. And so when, uh, when we're learning English, you know, our people were learning English, you know, um, you know, when they would talk, their Indian names, and then the Siapos would write their in the Indian names down in English. You know, it was you know we didn't have the adopted language that we have, or you know the the symbols or what have you today. You know, the X is for that yeah. sound. So there was a lot of H's and GH's used for that sound, or even for the R. So that was the prime example of that. Um, they said wish ram. Wishram, which originally was Washham, Washham. Uh, I see. Because I've heard Wishram a lot, and I always wondered if he just didn't know what he was talking about. Okay. <laughs> Who is your friend, if I may ask? Well, he's gone now, but his name was Marvin James. Not well known. Probably right around your age, actually. Oh. Uh, I'm trying to I'm trying to think of who his people are. It's hard, but he had this great story about how his um, great grandmother or grandmother was a French lady who uh, lived at some fort on this side on our side of the river, and uh, she fell in love with his Indian great grandfather, and uh, it was forbidden. So she actually swam across the Columbia River, and uh, became an Indian. Came on with the people, basically, is his story. Um, and she, he, he told me she was buried up there and everything. I don't know. I just thought that was the greatest, most romantic story. It should be a movie, you know. <laughs> I can't imagine that she could swim across the Columbia, but you know, it's a story. <laughs> but I'm trying to, uh, I'm trying to think of the other people in his family who have names that you might know. But I, I'm blanking it out right now. Yeah, you just gotta go mingle with the people. He was a shaker, and a lot of the shakers from White Swan that I knew, originally their families came from down by the river. It was an interesting connection. I mean, they didn't really identify with each other that way anymore. They'd hang out and say, hey, you're from the river. But when you talk to them, they'll all tell you they were from the river, and the shakers were originally down by the river, according to them, the old, old shakers. Like when TB came in and stuff like that, you see the shakers coming in at night, ringing the bells and singing and trying to help the people down by the river. And I, I don't know, I've been told a lot of stories and um, it's really great to be here to ask you these questions because I really never knew what, you know, I don't really know what people were talking about, but they were, you know. <laughs> so you, it was, it's really good to have you here to kind of explain what's going on. I just thought I'd tell you that. Yeah, the uh, the the Shaker, there's those old Shaker buildings are still standing behind the Shiloh Inn when you pass. Oh, uh, yes, yes, Adele's. I've seen that. 
I think it's because they can't figure out who owns the land is my guess. Like they can't figure that out, but they're still there I, and they don't knock them down. It's interesting. They need to just leave them alone. <laughs> right. yep. leave I wouldn't alone. want to be the one to knock them down. <laughs> But yeah, um, my aunt was a shaker, and so when I was a little boy, uh, when my mother died, I guess I was sent off with her, so she raised me in the shaker church in Warm Springs, so I um, never grew up to be a shaker, but, uh, you know, do believe in, you know, what their, what the belief is, you know, we're helping people and, you know, having that way of redemption for your own self, Um but uh, so anyway, uh, um, so I know we kind of went off of, um, you know, the, the river, you know, beginning with the river in Chihuahua, you know, in Chihuahua, the, you know, the big river. And, um, you know, we're always making reference to, um, you know, to you know, the Columbia River, but we also like, you know, like our own river, you know, we would just put Imatalamwana. Imatalamwana. Um, and for our creek that I grew up on, um, Houtmi Walla. Even though Houtmi itself doesn't really necessarily translate into Makai, that, that name of Makai, but it does imply the place, you know, out to Mackay. Um, and um, I'm not sure if a particular place where right by where we stay, our old house is, there's a, there's a piece of a chunk of earth that was like, you could tell like it was, um, um, oh, like it gave away, you know, and I'm not sure if that, that place in particular is where a landslide had happened of why it was called how to me because that word how to me um, um, is a slur off of a yucca how a yucca how so you know the implication of it had the land had slid so it was shortened to how to me and so anybody that lived at Makai Creek um, was uh, uh, referred to as how to me how to, how to me sama how to me sama yeah because Makai the name Makai see that uh, I'm still on my own genealogy trek of trying to find out why my family name became Makai when our original last name used to be spelled A-W-E-O. And I'm realizing that that name, uh, so Julie you might, you might be able to help me out here because uh, when I looked in the um, Nespers Dictionary, uh, I see that word uh, asleep as awia, awia, are we? Are we? Yeah, are we sleep? So, if it if it's spelled A W E O, and then in Nespers it's uh, accented E W E. Um, so it must have been a. a a runoff of that name, uh, that term. So it could, it would have been said, what, uh, are we, are we, are we, are we, are we, are we, huh? You asleep? Yeah. I don't know if it was, because uh, see, at one time, it, it, even though they said it, my great grandfather's name was, uh, uh, they said either hey, sleep eyes, sleep eyes, but here there's no word eyes in there. Yeah. <laughs> Saying you are asleep. 
Yeah. I don't know how how uh, he ended up getting a name like that, you know, it, and it was, uh, you know, like that would have been our original last name, and that, but somehow we ended up with Mackay, the name Mackay as our family name. My mother and all her older siblings. Uh, my, um, um, our grandfather, Billy, Billy Mackay, he was also a wee, a wee and then, but his father was Abraham Awiu. So I'm on that trek of uh, Nishawa Kitsha, Nishawa Kitsha Wenich, me, my wit, you know, trying to figure out the old names, trying to find the old names or what they mean. So right now I'm, I'm bugging our BIA superintendent for historical records for our great grandmother. Um, her name was Awanita, and thinking that she had had an enrollment number as an allottee. And then they, when I went to enrollment to the beat that the tribe, then I was even given her mother and father's name. We uh, Nasla, and then then her father. Awanita's father's name was K-O-H-I-L-E. And then so when I was talking to Kakina Thomas, and we were thinking that uh, that that uh, H could have been the the Shiapos didn't know how to spe- say the name, maybe uh uh kah, kahli, kahli. <laughs> you know, meaning truly mapped. You know, so they just spelled it however that they figured, you know. So always research. And and again, kicking myself in the teeth and for not asking uncle back when uncle was around or grandma. And, you know, our far as, uh, far as I know, you know, we're, we don't have the... Um, the genealogy we're not able to go back you know like you know way back you know of the early years everything was just you know orally said you know through, through word of mouth um uh, you know these were your people and then it was would be explained um katla you know maybe your great great big grandmother So, uh, Jean, how far are back are you able to go in your lineage? You know, I was just thinking of a name. I saw, I got my enrollment thing, and it showed all my uh, relatives, and Tuscan was one of the names that I was curious about. Maybe you knew what Tuscan means. It was a, I think it was Tus- a... Did- Tuscan? Uh-huh. It was on my grandfather. How's it spelled? Uh, I think it's T U S C A N. Yeah, I have yeah. T U T U S? Yes, C A N. Tuscan. And I'm sure I'm not saying it right because that was all my I went back home and got my enrollment stuff and it showed all these people's names I didn't know. Like you, I thought maybe I can go ask more. Cause that's a I'm I don't even know if it's male or female. Mm-hmm. You know. I guess I could look at with somebody that has you. You know it what could I be, it, it it could be Tuscan. 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 Uh, maybe uh, Alekalat can uh, chime in on this. Tusk. Tusk. It means t- to point. Oh. Hmm. Uh, Tuski. Tuski is you know like maybe like a pointed. Hmm. Yeah, uh, Tuscan is, it has that uh, um, implication of, you know, like pointing hmm. or a, a pointed or pointing hmm. either way, I think. Gosh, um, I'm going to, oh, yeah. So like, that's interesting. So it, which part is the pointing? Because like, okay, like, uh, uh, like this, 
our this is our pointing finger, right? Uh -huh. We call uh -huh. it uh, Tuskawas. The number uh -huh. one finger we call it Tuskawas. Oh. Hmm. Uh, uh, so. Um, wow. But um, wow. so I think when you would say Tuski, it would be, um, you know, you were like uh, maybe pointed at or pointed out or whatever, you know, maybe to uh, to be maybe stood up or something. You know, stood up, you know, appointed, so to speak. Yeah, um, the early war dances, they had a point system, all right, but it was like this. Yeah, yeah, I grew up with a lift. <laughs> My dad would point to things in the house with his lips. He had to really watch. <laughs> and I learned pizza yeah. too early. I taught my granddaughter pizza. <laughs> but I know we come from the Pale Pale Mox Mox family too because of uh, uh, my grandmother's side and eats no meat and gets her work done early are two translations of the names. Yeah. Yeah. But that, I don't yeah, know. My so, so the points, like I said, it's uh, Tusk. 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 Um, yeah, Tusk. Tusk. Wow, pointing finger. Tuskawa. Yeah, Tuskawas. 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 Yeah, in a dictionary, you know, you see it in there. It's a T U S K point at with the hand or finger. Uh, like uh, tusk, you know, there's these variations, uh, tusk. Hmm. Um, so I'm gonna see if, if there, we have a, a pointed in here because it could uh, kind of imply the same thing if it's in here. Well, it's just uh, it's just one niche that doesn't have Tusky, but Tuscan, um, Tuscan, you know, like pointed, pointed, uh, pointed at, like mm -hmm. that's what I think. Thank uh, you. Yeah. You know, um, Tuscan. Twin Taoist key, you know, like pointed with his bow or something like that, even, you know. I mean, you know, mm. could have been. Yeah. Chow nam tuskta twin na shina. You know, don't be pointing your gun at anybody. <laughs> Just your lips, huh? <laughs> You remember that's how you say way over there far. You yeah. Thank you, Mishnema Allen or Allen Wachman. Sheikh, Sheikh Nashwa. Al Nashwa Aiksha. I'm sitting. I I Oh, no, Aitsha. Aitsha. Oh, okay. Aitsha. 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 Kakema. Aitsha. Aitsha. Kunesh. Aitsha. Kakema. Yeah. 
picture shows me. What you got there, um, Ryan, that you're putting in the chat? Oh, I just had been looking up some stuff since we were looking up place names. And so I looked up Colotus because I was curious also about the town of Washtuckna, which is another one out there in the middle of nowhere. And I just found it interesting that Colotus is actually an Indian word and it means hole in the ground. And the reason they oh. chose it is because that was the word that was short enough to fit on the sign. Ah. So I sent you that just in case you needed any of to look it up. It's an older book from like the early 1900s for place names. And these places were not in the middle of nowhere. They were places of somewhere. Well, for sure. Back in the day, although I will say I don't think Colotus has ever actually been has ever been a town that was much more than a hole in the ground. But yeah, no, having family that originally was like in Winona and La Crosse and some of those areas, a lot of times these places were definitely a lot more uh, vibrant even than sometimes they are even today, for sure. Um, you know anything about that, uh, Jui? Hello? Chalotas. <laughs> Chalotas. It is named after a chief. He's um, a, a Palouse chief. I thought they said that was Washtuckna was named after the Palouse chief. Maybe their book is wrong. That's not the first time that a book's been wrong. I think Washtuckna is talking about being plugged up or something blocked. They talk that about the, me they talk about the when the flood came in. Uh huh. The area there, that south area of Washtuckna, used to be blocked. Okay. But then that flood went through. And okay. Those are all loose areas. Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm. You got lower loose, middle loose, and upper loose. Down the southern, the lower Palouse, they called the the river Nachiam. 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 Ah. Um, in the middle, they call it Nahaham. So a little bit. Nahaham. Nahaham. Nahaham Pum. Uh, so what does that mean, Nahaham? Nahaham. River, river and river people. Oh, so Nahaha, is that just kind of like, that means river, Nahaha? Nahaham. Nahaham? Yeah. Okay. Now, my great-grandmother used to live right on the banks of the Palouse. Yeah, I got some Palouse blood. My grandma could speak Palouse and Nispers. I'm not as fluent in Palouse, but I know a little bit. Yeah, my great grandma, she could probably speak Swedish. But yeah, she was out in that area. They raised sheep. But yeah, I'm pretty uh -huh. Pretty sure Clotus was he was a treaty signer actually. Oh really? Wow. Okay. Well, I think that, that place is named after him, I think. His village. Okay. Yes. I can't tell yeah. Yeah, so the book has it backwards. What book is that? Um, like I said, this was an origin of Washington Geographic names that was from like 1906. Mm. We're learning good. 
Those places out in nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> well, like I said, I originally grew up in Connell, which is only about 15 to 20 miles from Midland, from those places as well. So <laughs> we used to have a teacher. She was our principal for our school. And, and she was talking about, uh, you know, down in Warm Springs. And she goes, says, oh, my God, have you ever been there? That place is out in the middle of nowhere. And I looked at her and I says, hey, I got relatives there. And then it's not in the middle of nowhere. It is a place, you know, where my family lives. So it's not in the middle of nowhere. It says, you don't have family there. To you, it's nowhere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Where the Roshnish, Roshnish um, oh, over people there. live. There. Yeah. <laughs> Well, now that's middle of nowhere. <laughs> no. So, yeah, it's interesting in the book, they say that Washtuckna, a town in southeastern part of Adams County, was named for the lake or in a coulee in uh, part of Franklin County. The lake was named for Palouse Indian Chief. For a time, the railroad station sign boards for Colotus and Washtuckna were interchanged. Colotus is located near the lake, 12 miles west of Washtuckna. So it sounds like even the railroad couldn't keep it straight. So, lost engineers, huh? Yeah. Well, I think it, there was definitely some confusion between the two towns. Yeah, I, uh, I, when I talked to my students in, the, in my classes at times, um, or just, you know, um, a lot of places, even though there's a lot of places that are uh, non-native named, you know, pretty much a lot of the places are, you know, Indian named. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I always think that's a, that was great that a lot of those places have at least some reference. And then, it, then you know, then when we, like when I go over to, uh, oh, like towards Ellensburg, um, like, like those are, like even what is it, umtanam or mm -hmm. atanam, and then when I look at the word atanam, it kind of what if it's actually said that way of atanam or what if it's said at atanam, atanam meaning, uh, like when you go out, you know, because at implies to go out, mm -hmm. you know, atanam. You know, so a lot of times, uh, even though they're just, you know, spelled straightforward, at least with, you know, the American English alphabet, uh, we're still, you know, just, just like, just like uh, Jean's uh, ancestor's name or somebody in her family lineage, you know, so it kind of gave us a little bit to be able to go off of. So I think it's great that we at least um, have at least some means to be able to decipher some of our um, our names, and I'm so I'm grateful for our linguists, uh, early linguists, you know, like uh, Melville Jacobs, um, um, Bruce Rixby, and even Noel Rood. Um, was there any other linguists that 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 worked with you guys up there in Colville, Dewey? Um, let's see, just oh yeah, hard work. Mostly just Aoki. Aoki, yeah. Fred, don't forget Eugene Hunt and Phil Cash Cash Thomas. Right. Right. Flipping through their book on place names this whole time. But Eugene Hunt's written a good bit on place names specifically. Uh, can I add something too? Uh huh? Um, Randy, when we go root digging over in Ellensburg, he pointed out different ridges that different people lived in, in those mountains that hugged the back of Ellensburg and he explained different people. He named all those people that lived in those, those ridges that came into the valley there. So, you know, and I, I can't name them all, but he's really been a real resource for me for some of that history there. And Alan... Alan's grandma was recorded with the University of Washington about a lot of that history there too. And he's Wenatchee. I mean, they call him Lower Wenatchee or Upper Yakimas. They kind of tease him about where he's located because his allotment's right there where we dig. 
in Ellen's book. Ah. Yeah, Ellen. Oh, oh. His, you know, anyway, I wanted to add that because, boy, there's such, like you said, such rich history. And it's so unique to those groups that live in those areas. Mm. To mission attunement, Shwa, um, Ashap Nit, the Mishwa and Stash. Ellen Aronica. Mish. Ellen Aronica. Who is that? Yes, yeah, that's who I'm talking about. Alan Eronica. Yes, that's where I go dig. Oh, well, she Alan. was an elder lady. Yes, his grandma, his mom is a very renowned Indian woman. They recorded and took a lot of her history. Yeah, Alan Eronica's mom. I believe we're going to rename in the school after there was a it was an elder lady that used to come over to uh, Toppenish. She would come see her nephew uh, Matt Gowdy Senior. She would mm -hmm. come from. Uh, she wouldn't come there, but uh, Matt Gowdy's sister Myrtle Myrtle Gowdy Mason would bring oh. her there to our to the house. A yeah. very old elder lady, and she would get just happy to see see people, you know, even though she was just what a you know less than an hour away. And um, but I, I'm not sure of what language she spoke, but um, it was just amazing to. Is that who is that who you're talking about, Mercedes? Quite, quite the lucky. I don't really know her. I just kind of know Alan. Yeah, I'll find out more because I mean, that would be good to, to listen to uh, some of that because my, my own, my children, that, you know, they're, I think if they're related and they're descendants of, of her. What, through the Wenatchee side, and that's a that's pretty amazing. Like um, when I was uh, um, introducing, you know, my kids as mom to my grandmother, and um, it was funny because as soon as she heard the Gaudi name, she knew that that Gaudi Gaudi name was uh, uh, Shiapo because. Um, uh, I don't know which one of the, the great, great grandmothers had gotten with a man by the name of Captain Gowdy. And so that name was in their, you know, it's in their family tree. But then Indian names, my, uh, my grandmother was able to recognize, uh, like when my kids' mom, you know, told her, her Indian name, Hamisex. It was, you know, it was, oh, I, you know, I knew who that was. And, um, you know, so a lot of names they, they were able to identify with. Yeah. <clears throat> and I think those, uh, those arrows sometimes are, you know, um, I think, almost a bygone era of, uh, you know, of knowing the, the original people that had those, those old Indian names, Nima Wenichna, Naku Kumapoa, Pashukwana, Nashiman, Poacha, Wenichisim, you know, they, they knew each other just by their names, Tanan uh, Wenichna, you know, just the Indian names, Chaupa, Chaupo, Chawanichi, Shapatimke, Achwe, Mimi, you know, they didn't have English names. And uh, so that's why we're always trying to encourage our young people in the Kapashtam, Kawinpta, Wanichna, Tanantimke. You get an Indian name in the Kuhai Kushnam, Yutta. That's how you call each other. Um, you know, acknowledge each other that way, the Indian name. And not all Indian names, <laughs> not all Indian names, I believe, were. 
were always given ceremoniously. Sometimes people would get called things and it just stuck with them. <laughs> I've heard that, you know, I've heard that, you know, you get called something and, you know, and, and that and it would stick to somebody like, that's all we've known him by. <laughs> so, but that's, uh, um, and I think, um, you know, we're just, you know, where we can help with Indian names, you know, you know, we want to do that. You know, honorable names too, you know, good names, you know, not, you know, Yaish or whatever names, <laughs> not demeaning names, you know, good names. Uh, you know, I get teased about my name because, because my original last name, uh, I, I learned a few years ago because of my my grandfather's father, my great grandfather, his name was Charlie Kautlix. K O W T O L I K S. Kautlix. And he was a survivor of the Nespers War. He lived up in, he had to have lived in La, uh, up in uh, Wallawa, Joseph Country, uh, Imnaha, or wherever. Um, and then over here, then my grandmother, and then I just grew up with Tautilix. And I remember as a young boy, what if that's when I got that name? I was down at uh, Warm Springs at some home down there. I remember being covered with a whole bunch of blankets, you know, a whole bunch of blankets. And one of those cricks there, I think it was Warm Springs Creek, further up from the Shaker Church. You know, standing there draped with a bunch of blankets, and you know, not at the longhouse, it was at somebody's home. And so, I think that might have been when I got my Indian name of Tautalix. And then, here years later, one of the Nespers elders, when I come walking in, I'm getting greeted by my Indian name, Tautalix. Tautalix, you know, it's with that hatchet S at the end. And then, yet the, the Nespers elder says, What are they telling you? What are they calling you? Does you realize what they're telling you? They're, Kind of sound like you're telling him to come lay down by me. Don't <laughs> delete you know, if they said that, you know, they'd be telling you, come lay down by me. <laughs> so he would tease me, you know, uh, that's why uh, uh, he'd tell it, uh, Eugene John, you know, he was, it was just, uh, uh, I never thought of that. <laughs> but, uh, but Kautilix, according to, uh, the way that it was translated in uh, uh, Yellow Wolf, uh, his own story, there is a reference in there that Kautilik supposedly implied human remains scattered by wild animals. And uh, you know, pretty wild to, 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 to think that or to realize that. But, uh, you know, that's just how some of them old names were. So Fred, have you been yeah. interviewed yet? Like, has somebody like gotten your story because you have unbelievable stories? Has somebody sat, sat down with you yet and recorded some of this or do you want them to? Well, it's mainly my own children that, you know, that I wish would sit down with me and listen to me, <laughs> you know, yeah. but, you know, they're, you know, they're busy just being goofy like me, I guess. And yeah. <laughs> so it's going to have to be others that are going to say, you know what your dad used to say? <laughs> well, I'm actually yeah. grateful because don't you guys record these every every time? Every week? Yeah, it's been, yeah, we're we're live now or we're being recorded now. So, so yeah, yeah. so there's going to be basically a whole library of these that you're going to be able to go back and go over. And you'll have just stories and stories of stuff. And again, um, Tamna Nacht is the word for stories. Tamna Nacht, you know, for when we when we do tell, you know, stories or. And then when you actually look at that word in itself, you you have to see, you see the word Tamna in there, so it's like you're you know speaking from your heart. And what if it's a, uh, you know, history or humorous stories or, or legends or whatever, 
but legends are different. They're they're told during the winter times called uh, Walsitsus, Walsitsus, and that's the coyote stories, the legends, and it um, has a lot to do with uh, um, morals. You know how we're to how it were to be, and I'm I haven't heard. Excuse me if um, if Tomaslik has gotten that book yet, but I might have to just order it myself for him. Uh, Oh, I can't remember where it was. What was that, Jonathan? On the Kui Wacha from, is that from uh, Washington Press too? I think it's from Washington Press. It's available on Amazon and should be on Washington Press's website. And On the Kui Wacha is, is, is the Yakma Legends book. Specifically, I think um, out with a new edition of it a couple months ago. Well. Mm. Anybody have any questions? Anybody have any questions? Tun Mashwa Ashapnit. I have one question. Only one next today, Fred. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. So Fred, when you want to call out to someone to get their attention, is there a special way that you do that? Like in English, I'd say, hey, Fred, and I'd use hey to get your attention. But in other languages, you might put something on someone's name, do something like that. I think it works like that with some of the kinship terms in Umatilla, but is there a way that I could call out to you instead of saying, hey, Tautaliksh? Is there a Umatilla way for doing that? Um, hey. <laughs> um, it's it's funny, you know, in our just in our um, our our ways, um, you know, we get so sometimes, uh, uh, I guess. Mannerisms, I guess, so to speak, like uh, um, you know, so that so the gestures would be there for handshaking, you know, hey, you know, hey, wish them well. you know, not necessarily always acknowledging by by uh, you know somebody by their name, you know, you just acknowledge them and you know you acknowledge them as you see them, you know, so, hey, wish them well. So it was, it was kind of like a sound, like you know, like um, or or like if somebody comes one around the corner and then all of a sudden you just they just they're just there, you know. Then you, know, uh, you know, you just like I said, it's these sounds, you know. Uh, Mister Ma, Mister Misha, you know, hey, what are you doing? <laughs> okay, so the next so time we're uh, in the longhouse and I want to get your attention. Uh, hey, you just hey. Go, hey, okay. It, it, it's kind of like a, like a, like a, almost, you know, like, um, not hey, but it's like, it's a, hey, hey, you know, hey, because, uh, you know, I just, my, my nephew over there in Yakima, he, he learned that word that, you know, that, um, how to say that, you know, like when we, we like grandma, when she was disappointed in us, or even my uncle, when he saw me or something, then he'd make that sound, hey. You know, hey, and it kind of give you a look, you know, like, uh oh, I did something <laughs> that, that they didn't like. <laughs> uh, but it's uh, it's 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 really, um, um, I guess, sounding, making those sounds that, you know, just your your presence. Come on, Misha. You know, uh, you know. Then you just kind of start in the conversation, and uh, okay, because I, you know, all my life I never acknowledged my uncle with these with these Indian name, and it wasn't until after he was gone that I learned his Indian name, and uh, and uh, you know, just uh, even talked to him in Indian. And it was funny because when I talked to him in Indian, he'd answer me in English. 
but yet he wanted me to talk Indian. <laughs> you know, funny. You know, that's just how that how that is. But good question. Yeah. Yeah, good question. This is hey. nothing to do with language program. But this morning I was listening to the radio and I heard about a TV show written by Native um, writers with Native actors, Rutherford Falls. Has anybody seen that? Does anyone know anything about it? I heard it on Native Voice One. No, bad? It's good. The girls, yeah. Um, the girl, she went to U of O when I was there. She's a really good um, comedian. And it's like, I don't know. I like it. Where did you see it on Amazon? No, it's on the, you have to download the Peacock app. Peacock app? Yeah. Okay. And there's only like a few episodes that are free. I guess you got to pay for the subscription to watch the rest of the episodes. Well, thanks. <laughs> yeah. And who is that again? Well, there's a, apparently a new TV show written by Native people, and, uh, and and it's about I think a Navajo family. Like, and it's funny. It's supposed to be like a comedy TV show, and it's called Rutherford Falls. And I think it's like the first one of its kind. And I was just asking how I get to see it, and if it's a, if, if people around here felt it was a good thing to see. Oh, okay. Well, it's a. Uh, I guess these things are a big deal. Things are changing so much in Indian country, you know, so fast. From the yeah, outside. my only, yeah, my bucket list is to, to hopefully uh, either coach um, or to just be featured in, uh, you know, on a big screen or a little, um, you know, little character scripts, you know, to be able to, uh, hear our own language, you know, be used, you know, in the, you know, in um, what do you call it, dialogue, you know, and try to make it, you know, uh, as true as possible, you know, where it doesn't sound um, too scripted, but yet, you know, anybody that can, you know, is willing to learn to speak to be able to you know, have that little bit of conversation where it's not necessarily like, like I think in uh, what is that movie on Deadly Ground? Our elders speaking in there, um, uh, El Chapistol Head, and I'm not sure if the 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 uh, translation is actually true to what is being said in that uh, in the the caption. Because seemed like her daughter uh, Dolores George mentioned that uh, what she was saying. Uh, might have been different from what was being translated and uh, but it, we don't really hear we don't hear our language you know in, in you know on the big screen so have you ever heard of the film real engine that was produced in canada it was a documentary film about representation of native tribes not yet so I've seen it. We actually want to show it at the museum just because we think it would be a really good thing for people to see. But um, it was a really good documentary on that and just talking about how a lot of the tropes that happen in Native representation happened. So. There's a local family related to that actor that, you know, the Italian guy that they talk about. Um, are you talking about... Um, Iron Eyes Cody? Yeah, there's a family that lives in the area that's related to him and they really look up to him. So just really, like, yeah, because I mean, it's it's their grandpa or their great grandpa. Do you so have contact information? Yeah, kind of. OK, because just so I would just kind of be aware of that, that, you know, there there are families still living in the area that are related to that. And it does. I mean, they are presenting it as like, I mean, he was presenting himself in a certain way to get jobs. Well, also, and not only that, they were doing what they thought was accurate at the time, but that's the problem is history is kind of a moving target, right? Yeah, so I'm just saying, just, you know, just kind of be aware that there, his, his family still lives in the area. And they well, still and the reason I ask is um, I actually was, uh, came across a photo album that actually 
was for the history reenactors. I don't remember what the name of it is. Like it's like an old west photo, like like dress up club. I don't know how else you'd call it, but he's predominantly in that photo album. And I had no idea what to do with it, but if I could get it back to like family members, that would be fantastic. Okay. I can, um, I'll message you my email. Okay. Yeah, please do. Okay. Are you talking about the, the Cody family here? Raven and Iron? Yeah. Because I know Raven yeah. posts like pictures of her grandpa. So I know that she, he's somebody that's like very important to her and well, and I know that he would, I mean, and that's one of the things that they did in that movie was they kind of talked about how much he really uh, actually appreciated what he was doing. But again, it, that's the hard part, right? Is that that's usually so much, there's so many people involved in the filmmaking process that you can be one person, but it's still, it's still a lot of people involved in that whole process. So... Anyway, I just was curious. It's for someone that I'm outside of it looking in and I thought it was very enlightening. I just would be curious to get a, a native person's perspective. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, why is Chiao Kual now? Why we not the subsequent Chikuk? So um, maybe just as far as we'll go with uh, today's uh, uh, language. Um, so hopefully you got something out, out of out of this. Uh, Jonathan, you got any, any closing remarks? No. In the I language that you wrote. <laughs> okay, Annie. Uh, since we're talking about movies, I recommend Rumble. It's a documentary about Native American musicians. And um, I just highly recommend it. It's not really well known. Oh, and I think they're screening it for free online. So check it out. Is that it's, usually about on, the... it's usually on PBS. Yes. So I think it's screening for free this weekend. Yeah, I, I got that, and I thought it was about wrestling. <laughs> hey, all right, Indian wrestlers. <laughs> There's also a good one called uh, Blackbird Sings. It's by the Micmac. They're, they're, they used a Beatles song to help their language go forward. And a young girl that's 16 in high school sang the Blackbird song written by the Beatles. And I guess the Beatles based that song on civil rights movement and the role of women in the civil rights movement. And it really moved the elders to have her sing that song in their language. And I just think the more ways we can come up with presenting the language in a way that people can pick it up and music's one of them, I love it called Blackbird Sings. Blackbird I Sings. I have a little article about it if anyone wants to listen to it. Yay, good, Jonathan. Around the same time, um, some other folks were recording their own versions of it. And here's, if the link still works, here's someone's uh, rendition in Ojibwe. Okay. Um, Joey, you got any closing thoughts? Matt too. Matt too. Matt too. Ali Kalat. You're muted. 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 <laughs> You're still <laughs> muted. <laughs> No, I'm still sorry. I'm, I'm sorry that um, that I'm sorry. I'm just now getting back into into this, and um, I got just when I was jumping on, then I got caught up in a meeting. So I was, I got, I, I heard the last, the last thing I remember was um, 
Now to Lake's talking about, I can jump in at any time when he's talking about the word tusk, pointing, you know, then like, oh, I got to turn my mic off. And so I got going, going, going on that part. And so we're just not finished and getting back into the whole discussion here. I was. Yeah, we're just uh, winding down. Um, we're, we're, we kind of got into uh, talking about uh, Indian movies, but at the same time, uh, uh, it's been on my bucket list to eventually someday be able to hear our own language in either short stories or, you know, or, you know, a feature. But we, you know, like I say, we need writers and um, producers or what have you. So, yeah, yeah that would that'd be, um, That'd be something to, to hear, be something to see that, um, you know, a lot of the Salish people are, are doing that on their own. They've, um, I've heard they've, done, they come up with their own skits using language, their own, their language. And that'd be nice. That'd be nice to see that, um, our, our, um, our communities get involved in the same, you know, mm -hmm. speaking, speaking, using, using the language. Even if it's small, small little, little, you know, little skits, like even, um, I mean, it's even like reading, it's like reading, listening, reading to a comic, listening to a comic book, you know, comic books are not very, you know, their dialogues ain't like Shakespeare, you know, they're very quick and quick back forth with clips, but they even having that little type of thing to um, grow either on YouTube or you know, even like a for a talent show would be, be cool to see and cool to hear. Yeah, just saying how uh, either I, like I'd be I'd be glad to like be a coach for anybody that was willing to you know be the mm -hmm. be the featured uh, you know speakers what have you and um, or just you know write down lines you know that because Cedric Wildbill had Thomas and I reading reading. Uh, uh, some script, but it was, it's hard. Some of the, some of the languages or some of the English is really hard to translate in general conversation, you know? And so it was, it was like, um, you know, we'd have to word it in their own words rather than try to put it in the way that they have it scripted. Yeah. So yeah, I uh, can't remember who he's trying to do a, he wants to do a feature film about Jackson sundown and George Fletcher well, mainly about George Fletcher when he was, uh, you know, uh, a black man in an era of time, you know, with a lot of, uh, even then some, uh, a lot of racism, you know, where they used the N word, you know, frequently on him and yet he withstood and persevered, you know, and was a famous black rodeo cowboy and, and is in the national hall of fame in Oklahoma city. Okay. So I think this is um, all I have for, okay, okay. so I think we got a lot out of this, even though we're, uh, you know, we're talking about other things, but still very, very good. <laughs>